And so that concludes my talk on how I saved the bees. Um, are there any questions? Here's one. How about this? Have I ever been stung? Yes, I have. Quite severely, in fact. I was attacked by angry bees and stung repeatedly in and around my eyes. In fact, the eyes you see in my head aren't really my eyes at all, but the donated eyes of my son. <laughs> oh, don't worry, he's alive and well. He's, he's back home in Chicago, probably listening to the radio right now, <laughs> waiting for his dad to return so he can have his eyes back. Maybe I better explain. Yeah, I think I should. Let me take you back, way, way back, to the golden age of Daly II, almost four years ago. Well, I'm 55 years old, and I'm finally happy. <laughs> it might be some kind of delusion, but I don't care. I am fat, 55, and finished. I can pretty much just uh, screw around now because all my masterpieces are written. <laughs> Don't worry, you haven't heard of any of them. Works of true genius are only recognized by later generations. I'm resigned to that. <clears throat> but even when later generations do recognize my works, that's not really immortality. There's no such thing as immortality. Even Shakespeare will die someday when the planet self-destructs. <laughs> so uh, really, the whole concept of immortality is for suckers. It's just the frightened, trembling ego that craves it. See, in human consciousness, the ego is the last actor to leave the stage. <laughs> what forces him off? Silence. <laughs> I've had plenty of that. <laughs> but now, for me, the last actor has left the stage, leaving only an egoless, deep soul consciousness. <laughs> That's the real, essential self, the universal soul in relaxed, attentive concentration. And it's that concentrated awareness that I bring to my beehive. See, beekeepers, really good ones like me, have a, a, a very special kind of knowledge. It's, uh, it's, it's an ease that allows us to draw near the hive without arousing fear or anger. <laughs> it might be a gift, but I think it's something we develop over time. Lots of time. Did I mention that I was 55 years old? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Fat 55 and finished, did I say that? <laughs> uh, OK, sorry, sorry. Anyway, when I draw near the hive, the hive tells me what to do, not vice versa. I'm no longer in control. See, that's what's wrong with the world today. Certain people trying to control everything, like some of these hate mongers in the media. You know what I mean? That ain't the way it ought to be. Love, that's where it's at. <laughs> Acceptance plus gratitude, that is happiness. Let go, live in the moment, You'll find all your desires melting away along with whatever is bothering you. Like my job. <laughs> you don't fire me, I fire you! I fire you! <laughs> Stop adjusting reality to suit you. <laughs> Bloom where you're planted, right? Right, Holly? I'm planted. 
in the Bridgeport neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. That's where I live with my wife, Ona, and my four-year-old old son, Lucas, and that's where my beehive is in the backyard. Did I mention I was a beekeeper? <laughs> I am, with my own hive. The hive came in the mail as a build-it-yourself kit. It was hard nailing those frames together, too. The nails would keep splitting the flimsy wood. <laughs> Shit! Give me the right size nails and clear instructions and I will do fine. <laughs> Those greedy thieves at the beekeeping supply company want to send the new hobbyist the cheapest shit they can get away with just to hold on to a few pennies. Such clever minds out there just thinking up ways to screw me. <laughs> That's bad karma, man. After all, I am just trying to get ahead. But anyway, I finally get my new hive built and my buddy Chip and I drive out to Indiana to pick up a fresh young bee colony, a nucleus colony, or nuke. I figure handling those bees is gonna be a lot easier than building that stupid hive was. After all, bees are part of nature, like me, so we'll understand each other. <laughs> Sticks and nails are not part of nature. My friend Chip, he's about the nicest guy in Chicago. He's from California. <laughs> Chip takes the frames full of bees out of the nuke and sets them gently in the new hive. Pretty soon the bees have settled into their new home and they're out foraging for food. My son Lucas is staying far away from the bees, <laughs> but I'm trying to teach him to be less afraid. Lucas and I love to get on YouTube and watch Honeyland, an old 1930s cartoon about bees. In it, a boy bee and a girl bee fall in love. But then a spider abducts the girl bee, so the boy bee comes to her rescue. He stings the spider repeatedly, but it's not enough, so he sounds an alarm. Wow! And a whole squadron of fighter bees flying in military formation hone in on the hapless spider who, after all, is only trying to live his predatory life. <laughs> They sting and sting and sting and sting and sting the spider till he runs away. The girl bee and the boy bee are restored and there's happiness again in Honeyland. But that cartoon lies. For one thing, boy bees or drones, they don't even have a stinger. And a bee can only sting once and then she dies. She leaves her stinger in her victim and as she pulls away, she, in effect, disembowels herself, as a lot of her guts stay attached to that stinger. Those guts are her venom sac, which is a tiny natural syringe full of bee venom. So even after she's gone and off dying somewhere, the sac still pulsates, injecting venom through the tiny barbed needle of the stinger. Also, uh, boy bees or drones don't live happily ever after. Um, a drone's penis is ripped from his body after mating, staying inside the female while he drops away and dies. So that cartoon distorts the truth, but, but it does help Lucas love the bees. <laughs> One of my backyard neighbors loves the bees too. He's a kind old Chinese man. Every time I see him standing in his garden, he gives me a big beaming smile, points to the hive, and nods approvingly. He knows those bees are pollinating his garden and will yield him a bumper crop of weird Chinese vegetables. Now, the neighbors on the other side of the fence, they're not quite as enthusiastic. A beehive! That's Angie, the renter on the first floor. Angie is a lifer in our South Side neighborhood. Her father had been a cop in the machine days of Daily the First, and she hates to think about life next door to a beehive. I try to reassure her as delicately as I can, these are Italian bees, Angie. <laughs> Very gentle. They'll only sting if you really, really hassle them. Since Angie considers herself Italian, the ethnicity of the bees calms her down a little. Then there's Vicky, the single mom that lives upstairs. Uh, she's not so excited about the hives either. Vicky ha has a Lithuanian last name, and she can still name some of the starchy Lithuanian foods. 
She doesn't like it when her Chinese or Mexican neighbors don't speak English. This is supposed to be America, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, and she's looking at the hive very, very suspiciously. I just don't want my little Johnny to get stung. The kids of the neighborhood start coming up to me as I sit on my front steps. You have a beehive. If we get stung, it's going to be your fault. My neighbors stop saying hello as they walk by. This disturbs my wife, but, but I assure her that everything's going to be OK. I love to watch the bees fly out of their hive to look for food. They usually head southwest in the direction of the old stockyards. That must be where the nectar is. Anyway, after I've had the hive for about a week, I get a call from our 11th Ward alderman, Duke Balzer. <laughs> yeah, hello, Mr. Castutis. Um, you got those bees over there. I want to talk to you about that. At your convenience, of course. Be here tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I'm there on time. Oh, yeah, hello. Come on, come on, sit down, Mr. Castutis. Oh, thank you. It's Nakus. Uh, Kastutis is my first name. It's a Lithuanian name. Oh, sure, I know that. I know a Lugan name when I see one. I like Lugans. I, I even married one. Yeah, there, there used to be a lot of Lugans down here in Bridgeport. Oh, I know. And I, I can't even believe you remember that old slur word for Lithuanians. Uh, they didn't used to like to be called that. I don't know if you know that. But yes, uh, there used to be a lot of, Lith uh, Halstead to Morgan was all Lithuanian at one time. And they're good people too, hardly no fights or nothing. Now let's see here. You've been over there on Union three years, right? Well, closer to four, actually. Don't correct me, Mr. Kastutis. Um, <laughs> and I see you've been voting, good. Registered Democrat, that's good. Uh, and I'm looking. Hey, you don't pay a whole lot of property taxes over there on Union. That's a nice house you got, too. I had one of my guys take a picture. Is this your house? Well, yeah. Um, let me ask you this, Mr. Kastutis. You like it over here in Bridgeport? Oh, yes, I do, very much. You need anything done. What do you mean? Oh, uh, you know. Street light fix, stop sign, zoning variance, uh, building permit, extra parking permits, White Sox tickets, anything along those lines? Well, that's really nice of you, but no, thank you. I think I'm fine. If you need anything, you let me know, all right? All right, shake, brother. Oh, there's one more thing. This is Bridgeport. We, we don't want no bees over here, <laughs> all right? You want to have bees or anything like that there, you go up over to the north side and live over there. I can't afford that. Besides, uh, Mayor Daly's encouraging. Don't Mayor Daly me. I'll Mayor Daly you, not vice versa. <laughs> but the green initiative, city in a garden, there's beehives on top of City Hall. It's got nothing to do with Bridgeport, all right? Now, look, I'm the alderman here, and folks is pissed, Mr. Kastutis, if you pardon my language. Now, all it takes is for one kid to get stung and have an allergic reaction. And then I get big trouble over here. What's the Green Initiative going to do about that? huh? But the city is zoned for bees. I got a right. Don't threaten me, Mr. Kastutis. I've handled Lugans fatter than you. <laughs> now, Bridgeport is a nice neighborhood. But you know, sometimes bad things happen over here, and even to good citizens like yourself. So I'd advise you, Alderman, you asked me if I needed anything that I, I should just ask, right? Could we just have a neighborhood meeting with whoever is complaining so I can explain how wonderful bees are? Neighborhood meeting? <laughs> they ain't never had nothing like that there. But after a lot of haggling, he agrees to a meeting the following week. I get a lot of my Chicago beekeeper friends from other neighborhoods to agree to come and talk about the joy of bees. I just wish I knew something, somebody with clout or influence in Southside politics. And then one day, I bump into Arunas Raskauskas walking his dog down Morgan Avenue. 
Arunas is from Vilnius, uh, but he lives in Bridgeport now, working for the Lithuanian consulate downtown. I tell him all my bee troubles, how I could use someone with clout, and so on. Hmm. I will be at the reception tomorrow with Senatoras Durbanas. Senator Durbin is who he, who he means. Senator Dick Durbin's half Lithuanian. His mom was Lithuanian, so he likes us. He even has a big round Lithuanian head. <laughs> if I get a chance to talk with him, maybe I will tell him about this, but I don't know. I cannot promise anything. You know, I understand. I don't know. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I can already hear the buzzing of the angry community residents as I approach 11th Ward headquarters. I open the door to the meeting room and somebody shouts, hey, there's that B-man, boo! Alderman Balzer raps his gavel. All right, that's enough of that. Now look, I know you want we should get rid of that beehive, but Mr. Kastudis lives over here too and I told him he could talk to you. So please, just for these few minutes, hear the man out and then we get rid of those beehives, okay? <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Kastudis. It's Nakas. A Lugan is a Lugan. I told you the floor is yours, or don't you want it no more? <sighs> I get up in front of the hostel crowd. Of all my bee buddies, only young Chip has shown up to support me. Good evening, neighbors. Uh, thank you for coming here and letting me tell you about the wonderful hobby of beekeeping. If those bees sting my kids, you're a dead man. I'll come over there and kill you myself. Oh, I don't think these bees will be stinging anybody. These are Italian bees. Are there any Italians out there? A few hands go up. Then I don't have to tell you about your own gentle disposition or the easy, relaxed ways of your relatives, do I? These bees are just the same. They'll only sting if you really, really hassle them. And wait till you see how they pollinate your flowers and vegetables. And when you get a taste of my delicious Bridgeport honey, you're going to want a hive of your own. <laughs> no bees in Bridgeport! No bees in Bridgeport! The crowd is chanting, rising to its feet and beginning to walk toward me. Balzer wraps his gavel. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. All right. Now is that it for the pro bee faction? <laughs> My last friend, Chip, bounds to the front of the room in his California hemp rope sandals. He smiles at the crowd with his friendly stoner eyes, puts his hand on his heart and says, bees are really, really cool. He walks back to his seat in triumph, <laughs> certain that he's persuaded the crowd. <laughs> no bees, no bees, no bees! Balzer wraps his gavel. All right, all right, that's enough of that. I think we've heard just about enough and we're ready to make up my mind. Just then, the door to the meeting room flies open, and in walks Arunas, followed by Senator Dick Durbin, who declares, all rise for his honor, the mayor of the great city of Chicago. Mayor Richard Daly walks to the front of the meeting room, stands above Balzer, looks at the crowd, and says, we're going to have bees in Bridgeport, and that's all there is to it, OK? There's too much at stake. I can't afford no subterfuge from the peanut gallery over these green initiatives I got working. All right? <laughs> Alderman, you're a good man. Don't change that. So the bees stay. He points his finger at the crowd. And I don't want to hear a peep out of you. <laughs> you owe me. You all owe me. <laughs> Let me know, Alderman, if there's anything I can do. I'll see you at the ball game. Daly winks at Durbin and walks out. Durbin winks at Arunas and walks out. Arunas winks at me and walks out. The crowd is silent, heads bowed. But with the big shot safely gone, they begin to lowly boo and hiss. All right, that's enough of that. You heard the mayor. We're voting for the bees. Balzer wraps his gavel one last time, ending the meeting. Chicago democracy has triumphed again. Thanks.